on. How are you? Did you rest well? Yep, this is a comfortable place to rest. I guess that's one thing here that's better than the desert. But other than that, there's not much going for this place. Saying things like that isn't going to help, Adia. But it's the truth. The desert is full of terrible memories for me. Being there was like... Yeah, like wading through thick mud. That's a weird way to put it. Hmm. Actually, if you hadn't mentioned it, Paimon would have already forgotten that this domain is in the desert. I know what you mean. The air here isn't at all like the desert. It's very humid. Almost as if we're in the rainforest. It's a very familiar feeling for me. <sighs> Everyone looks well rested. If you're ready, we can start making our way to the jungle north of here. Good luck, everyone! I'll be rooting for ya! Hold on. I said we, didn't I? No need to say goodbye, because you're coming too. Huh? But wait, uh, I'm, I'm just the mascot! You can't back out this time, Adia! The manager of the fairgrounds is waiting to see you. She said Adia is the only person who could help. Yes, Kale and I discovered a fairgrounds in the forest. The person in charge of it seems to be a Spotamod scholar. A scholar? But what's she doing there? Researching the forest ley lines? Oh, I wish there were ley lines here that I could ever study. Anyway, I know who you're talking about. I'd better come along then. Finally, someone has arrived. Sorry to keep you waiting, Maimuna. We've brought Adia with us. Thank you, Kale. It's been quite some time since I've seen you, Idia. To be honest, I didn't think you'd actually show up. If anything, I thought you'd be curled up somewhere crying alone. Hey, you shouldn't be saying things like that. Doesn't seem to be the first time Paimon's heard someone say that about Adia, though. You wanna see me cry? Fine! I'll stop crying right here! Uh, no, please don't! Alright, alright, I shouldn't have said that. Now, who are these two? And Paimon is Paimon! They're reliable helpers. Lucky for you that I found them. You'd better be more careful about how you speak to them, okay? Of course. Good to meet you. You may call me Maymuna. For the sake of time, we should forego the usual pleasantries. Please follow me. Wow! Look at that huge tent! Amazing, isn't it? I helped make it. What fun would a fairground be without a tent, right? Really? Oh, Paimon knew you couldn't be so pathetic. You just act modest all the time to hide your actual abilities. Uh, huh? What is it, Kale? Uh, sorry. <laughs> I'm not sure if I should tell you. I'm afraid it might dampen the mood. <laughs> That's not important. Please, just speak your mind. Uh, well... There are lots of vendor booths set up here, but there's no one running them. In fact, there's no one at this fair at all. <laughs> it looks pretty deserted. The truth is, this used to be an exciting and bustling place. But just a few days ago, 
something happened, and it seemed like... Like the world was suddenly flipped upside down? Yes, exactly. Something fell from the central hub into the tent and knocked down the crystal light that was hanging at the top. Oh, the crystal light. Mm-hmm. I remember a certain someone said that we should have beautiful lights to celebrate at a fair, and made us that crystal light. But once the light fell, the tent became a complete mess and the Hydro Eidolans were trapped inside. Just when I was at my wit's end, a man from the Lawrence clan came and offered his assistance. Wait, he offered to help you? Yes, and he refused to listen to any of my warnings. He just walked straight into the tent and then... Yes? And then? Yeah! Don't leave us hanging here! What happened? And that's it. He became trapped inside along with the Hydro Eidolans. Oh no! We have to do something! We can't just leave him there, Maimuna! I know, but the situation inside might be more difficult than you think. You should mentally prepare yourselves. <laughs> Just talking about it is a waste of time. Since we're already here, let's go and scout out the situation ourselves. <sighs> All right. This way, please. There used to be a large stage inside, but after everything got shaken up, it seems the very nature of the entire place was altered. The lamps and crystal light that were hanging above have all fallen down, which makes repairs near impossible. Wait, so you mean it's difficult to move around in there? Yes, mainly because of the lights. Do any of you have experience being on stage? Once the stage lights turn on, everyone's attention is focused on you. Uh... I can't stand that feeling. Having everyone's attention focus solely on me would just make me feel terrible. Me too! I'm no good at speaking in front of people. And then to have everyone staring at you? Oh, just the thought of it makes me shudder. Sounds like you have some things you haven't been able to let go of yet. <sighs> Please don't laugh. I'm trying my best to change that, but... There are still some things I can't overcome. Like when there's a lot of people around, or when people are staring at me? No, there's nothing funny about that. And you know what? It's not a bad thing to care when other people are looking. That's my opinion anyway. Think about it. Only people who have high standards for themselves would worry about failing to meet others' expectations. You have many good qualities, Kale. I bet if you had to learn dance since childhood like myself, then you'd be an even better dancer than me. No, no way! <laughs> that would be impossible. I can relate. I know exactly how she feels. Maybe we should find a time for you to learn with me. And one day, you will become an outstanding dancer too. By that time, you'll be so focused on performing your beautiful moves that you'll no longer worry about an audience watching you. Wow. You are so passionate about this that she's practically glowing now. Really? You do that? You wouldn't think I look stupid and secretly laugh at me, would you? <laughs> you really think I'm that kind of person? Fine. Vengeance will be mine. Oh, no! Of course not! A all right. Please teach me. Seems there's no need for me to warn you again. Anyway, you just need to open the curtain and you'll be able to see the stage. Well, let's figure out a way to fix this. Looks like we need to raise the platform underneath the crystal light. If I remember correctly, the stage controls should be somewhere around here. It seems we have to use the colorful lens to make the light change colors. A 
That's one way of shining new light on the problem. Hey, Maymuna, do you happen to know someone named Sino? No, never heard that name before. Why do you ask? Oh, never mind then. Paimo was just thinking you two would have a lot in common. <clears throat> Back to the situation at hand. We should probably head into the passageway that opened now. Hello? Is anyone here? If you can hear me, please help! Lessig Lawrence? Who are you? Who has the audacity to utter my full name? Uh, you sure don't look like you're in any condition to be talking like that! Yep, he's a member of the Lawrence clan, all right. Even though he's hanging on by a thread, he still insists on clinging to meaningless etiquette. You. What are you doing here? Huh. Have you come here to mock me, Eula? If you would just think for a moment, it should be pretty obvious why we are here. Yet, now you are intentionally trying to provoke me? Of course, you don't have to accept my help. After all, aristocrats are naturally superior and need no help from others. Yes, thanks for the reminder. I don't need help from the likes of you. I don't think he really means it, Eula. His tone was harsh, but he keeps glancing at you from the corner of his eyes. It's my opinion as a healer that he needs help. Okay. <laughs> he's been trapped for so long that it seems he's forgotten how to hold a decent conversation. <laughs> how ridiculous. Let's go. We'll leave the stage to this person who'd rather save face than save his own life. Hey, no, no, wait! Uh, halt! You cannot just leave me here. We're both of the Lawrence bloodline, after all. Helping me when necessary certainly won't tarnish your prestige. If anything, my embarrassing predicament will be overshadowed by your virtuous deed. We must uphold the prestige and dignity of the family. This is the best reason you could come up with? You think tacking on the word family will be enough to talk me into helping you? You should be ashamed for your careless actions. It's because of you that we all had to come here. I... Uh... Seems everyone in the Lawrence clan is this way. They'll do anything to save face. All right, all right. Looks like it's time for the mascot to step in. Here you go. One for Eula and one for Lessig. What is this? Candy? Uh, thanks. Oh, the smell. It's just like the aroma I smell coming from the lens. Yes, that's right. Enjoying something sweet always lightens the mood. Oh, thank you, Miss Mascot. I certainly do feel much better now. <laughs> so he's willing to thank someone else, but not me. Eula has been worrying about you the past few days, and asked me several times regarding how to find you. But now that you two have been reunited, I won't have to keep answering her questions anymore! <laughs> oh, I'm so happy! Let me clarify one thing. I don't care what happens to him. If you're going to keep saying nonsense like this, then... Eula will never admit that she actually cares about him. Yeah, you're probably right. If you're going to keep saying nonsense like this, then... Uh, then at least give me another piece of candy. Hmm? Oh, sure, sure! I, I still have more! Sorry. I admit my mistake. I know I've caused heaps of trouble for all of you. <laughs> Why couldn't you have just said that earlier? I'm back. Oh? Have you already finished catching up? Why are you all looking at me? All right, then let's clean things up here and keep working our way toward getting the crystal light fixed. Ah, there's no need to push yourself in your condition, Lessig. I'll take him and find some place for him to rest. I happen to be a little tired myself. All right, I'll leave my cousin to you then. You'd better rest up and regain your strength before we settle things, Lessig. Hmm. 
Now, let's see if there's any way to keep raising the platform higher. We probably will need to find a mechanism that's like a lamp. Strange. Is that really the lesson that I know? You shouldn't always judge people based on the way you knew them before. People change, and people can always make different choices. Hmm. Dolan, it must have been trapped in the curtain, but at least it seems to be okay. a magical tent after all. The inside is much larger than it appears from the outside. Haven't you heard stories with this sort of thing before? Oh, another path has appeared! This should be the last level! Yes, don't worry. We're almost to the top of the tent. The last thing we need to do is raise the crystal light to the very top of the tent. After the stage collapsed, I realized that having it raised only halfway makes it look a lot like the stage at the Grand Bazaar. Have any of you visited the Grand Bazaar before? No, I haven't. I have. I've gone there a few times with Master Tainari. The place is bustling with all kinds of vendors. And if you're lucky, you can see Nilu perform her dance. Oh, a dance from Sumeru? <laughs> I'd like to see that myself. Hmm. If only it were on the way back, then we could stop there. It doesn't matter if it's on the way or not. I would be happy to take you whenever you have time, Eula. Great. I'll take you up on that offer. Yeah! Hmm. Now that Paimon thinks about it, we've already been there more times than Paimon can remember. Really? My father used to help with festivities at the Grand Bazaar and would always give me candy during the events. I was just a kid and didn't understand anything. I was happy as long as he gave me some candy. To me, fairs and festivals were the best things ever. I always thought my father was amazing and wanted to be just like him when I grew up. But aren't you a scholar in the academia, Mimuna? As far as I know, scholars seldom could spend time doing anything but research. I doubt you could have time to assist your father in preparing festivities. Yeah, seems you read me like a book. When I had the choice between becoming who I wanted to be and who my parents wanted me to be, I ended up choosing the latter. But I was never happy about it. Huh. That's almost the exact opposite of Eula's situation. You must have already realized that. Why else would you set up all the booths here and make this place like a fairgrounds? Yes, but I'm still not as happy as I imagined I would be. I realized that attending a fair and running a fair are two completely different things. The main reason my childhood was so fun and carefree is because my family worked hard. But my father knew how difficult and tiring running a fair could be, so he wanted to push me towards academics. <sighs> but in the end, I didn't do well in either. I gave up on myself and resorted to investigating ley lines in the desert. Some things happened and then I accidentally ended up here. I finally had a chance to make my wish of running a fair come true. But after seeing everything come crashing down, I feel like I've lost the strength to go on. It's not as bad as you make it out to be, Mimuna. No need to feel so down. You have the courage to change, and you've been actively guiding us on this journey. 
Someone who's given up on themselves could never do these things. Oh, Kale. I understand my situation better than anyone. You don't need to try to comfort me. It's not that I'm trying to comfort you. It's just that people sometimes don't realize that their actions speak louder than words. Believe me, this is something that I learned from my time together with Eula. Oh, what are you trying to say? Oh, uh, <laughs> nothing. <clears throat> now, let's get that crystal light fixed. All right. Yes, the lens is made of materials that are easily melted by light. <laughs> is it me, or do I smell something sweet here? Taking care of people. Seems I found another good thing about myself. I don't know if I should be worried for him or <laughs> happy for her. Uh, the shadow. It's massive. Uh, wait. The shadow just now. It's. Uh. uh <laughs> seems he still might need a little more time to recover. Tell me, did everything go well for you all? Of course. With a team like the Traveler, Paimon, Kale, and Eula, they're at least 40 times more reliable than you ever were. Only 40 times more reliable? That means I'm still pretty good then. <sighs> I guess it's impossible to feel like you've lost once you've already given up. I'm a little concerned about how comfortable you are with that. Huh? What has happened? How did I get outside of the tent? Oh, that's right. I remember meeting Eula, and then... And then... Oh, my head. Oh, you're awake now. Uh, don't worry. Th that's just a side effect of your treatment, Lessig. I'm afraid I still feel a little disoriented. Lessig Lawrence. Oh, it's you, Eula. All right, all right, I'll do it. I'll come back to Mondstadt with you and abandon my wild efforts to restore the Lawrence clan. Interesting. Now you want to talk. Seems like you've had a change of heart. In that case, maybe you'll be able to explain everything in detail for us now. I, uh, I admit it, yes. I came here in hopes of finding a way to restore the Lawrence clan to its former glory. But it was a long journey, and I didn't always know the way. 
I passed through Liyue and Sumeru. There was even a time when I lost my wallet and had to live in the wild. But the peculiar thing is, I realized that nobody knew me out there. And not a single person even cared about the Lawrence clan. You and I are like glass pawns that were raised in shackles. We were taught to act like nobles, but outside the walls of our home, the people of Mondstadt despised us. Such pompous, hateful, and stubborn teaching. It all culminated to making us cling to the old aristocratic dogma in an attempt to maintain our pride. It's like a never-ending game of tug-of-war, but it is meaningless. You understand. Or I should say, you have already long understood. But I'm afraid that I have only just realized this. Hmm. Paimon sort of understands what Leseg is saying. Everything he said is true. Your family is probably unaware that you've already changed how you see things. Yes. This has all happened recently. After coming to this domain, I realized the Mondstadt that I want is one where not everyone fears me. All that I and many other members of the Lawrence clan long for is a place where we can live peacefully with others. Lessig, both you and I never had anything to do with the glory of the Lawrence clan. That is all in the past. We are just ordinary people. <sighs> I originally planned on returning to Mondstadt after taking care of things here. I never thought you would come here. I was completely shocked, which is why I reacted like I did. I'm sorry. See, people can always make different choices, and it seems that Lasik has also chosen to become someone he truly wants to be. <clears throat> yes, about that. I'm afraid I haven't quite found my own purpose in life yet. That's all right. Being able to clearly choose between becoming who you want to be and who your parents wanted you to be is already a step in the right direction. How to find true happiness is probably one of the most difficult research topics of all. I have a suggestion for you, Lessig. Why don't you return to Mondstadt and tell your parents what you just told us? <laughs> They'll probably try to tear me limb from limb. But what about you? Did you ever tell your family about what you think? This is something that I've been thinking about, too. Perhaps the two of us can sit down with the rest of the clan and discuss it with them. The Lawrence clan is just like this stage. It was once home to glorious performances, but those days are now long gone. And it is time for the stage to be updated. She's so solid and tough, but also clear and open, like an ice cube. Is that why she's able to dance any time and anywhere she wishes? Um, are you all done talking now? Yes, I think so. By the way, that is for you. Please take it. I found it on Lessig earlier. Oh, it's one of the missing components! Wait, so you had it all this time? Why didn't you give it to me earlier? Well, you didn't ask. All right, I admit it. I forgot about it. Okay, we'll let the Traveler hold on to it for now. Hmm? Wait, this looks like... It looks pretty familiar. Have we seen one of these before? Shh! Now's not the time to brag about being a hero! Ah, right! I also bought a similar box at the last festival. Yes, people often use this kind of box for candy at festivals. This was one of the materials originally used to create the tent. But now that the tent has been repaired, we no longer need it. Eating the candy from the box as an adult will never be as delicious as it was when you were a kid. But if you really think about it, there are way more things you can eat as an adult. Ah, so when it comes down to it, eating candy is sort of like life. It's just another choice. Hmm. So, as of now, we've already collected three of the missing components. Only one more to go. I'm sorry that repairing the tent took so much of everyone's time. You should all head back and have a rest. I'll lead the way. Hey, Kokomi! You're already here! Oh, you're back. I just 
your adventures to the forest went smoothly. Yep, you could say that. How about you? Up to anything today? Well, I suppose it's time I told you that as the Divine Priestess of Watatsumi Island, I shouldn't actually be here now. The truth is that a relic known as the Shinro Casket was lost from Watatsumi Island long ago. But recently, an orb matching the relic's description suddenly began emitting light, almost as if it was guiding people to it. <sighs> this is what led me to find the relic's whereabouts. I wasn't lying when I said that. Koro has often told me that sitting at home reading light novels is not the best of practices, and that I should try to get out more. As I made my way from Watatsumi Island to Sumeru, I enjoyed a variety of breathtaking sights. <sighs> it really is a beautiful nation. I even stayed in the rainforest for several days. I was surprised to find that the relic had ended up in the desert. I knew it was somewhere here, but I still couldn't pinpoint the exact location. Though I feel that Idea was not intentionally trying to hide anything from us, this domain does have plenty of secrets. I'm sure you've sensed that too. Now that you mention it, a lot did happen today. Hmm, I see. When you found Lessig, did you also happen to find any clues related to this domain? <sighs> I'm afraid that he was caught up in his thoughts and didn't pay attention to his surroundings. Actually, before the world was flipped upside down, this domain didn't look anything like this. Hey, everyone! Oh, I hope we're not interrupting your conversation. It's alright. You two did a lot today. Care to join me for a cup of tea? Sure! That would be perfect! Yula and I just made some snacks! Turns out, Idea has a cooking stove and oven. Seriously, why didn't she mention it earlier? Oh, so did you make us some moon pies? No, I made something called storm crust pie. You should try one, Traveler. And I made some pita pockets. You can try some, Kokomi. It should taste great with tea. Uh, sorry, I should call you General. Oh, I would be happy to try some. By the way, Yula, how's your cousin doing now? Oh, him. <laughs> you would never guess, but he's busy over by the oven now.